Hi guys, Redneck Computer Geek here. We haven't gone tractor hunting in a long time. Well, basically, I ended up with a gentleman who knew me from years ago and remembered when I used to go tractor hunting, and he got a hold of me. And his brother ended up buying this for his son. Well, the brother died and the son had no interest in it. So he got a hold of me the other day and he said, you know what, Neil, come get it. Make it disappear. I've got a brand spanking new mower. I don't want it. So guess what? We ended up with a Wizard Plus. Wizard Plus is basically an AYP tractor. It's essentially a Craftsman, like, it's essentially about the same as an LT1000 Craftsman. AKA, the exact same thing the main mud warrior was built on. The only difference is this has a side shift on it. Now that could get interesting. Now the problem is with the wizard, and I don't know whether it's just this one or whether it's a wizard thing. I'm going to look it up later and post a disclaimer right about here. This has a spicer in it. It does not have a peerless. Another thing to note is that there's no mats. They're all pulled out. And basically he said he parked it and it never started in the spring. So we're gonna take it, we're gonna roll it off and go from there. Gonna get it in underneath the lights and back into the shop. These lights are awesome. If you want, there's a video on them and what they cost me and everything else in the whole setup. Take a look at that sometime. Well, at least the transmission definitely isn't stuck. It rolled really good. All right, so one of the first things we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the hood right off so we can just plain get to the engine because the big key factor was he said it wouldn't start correctly, so we wanna access it. Lift it. There's gonna be a connector on this side for your headlights. Then lift it up and out. Now the gasoline in it Smells good. You can actually look down in and see it's clear gas. So he definitely added some. We're gonna check the engine oil, just because it's here. It is on the low side, definitely asking to be added to. I notice there's no stud over the top of the air filter. That kind of worries me. We'll go from there. Well, let's see if it'll actually kick at all. Now, when you do these Craftsman's, you've got a set that comes up to where it is that it runs at, and you push it forward, you should actually see the choke lever move. So let's push it forward and watch for the choke. Yep, it moved. And let's try it. All right, so the battery's dead. Let's hook up a booster. We got a 55 cranking amp on-demand booster available. All right, so we have 55 cranking amp going into it. The battery definitely was dead. Good gas, let's try it. Well, that was interesting. It almost sounds like there's no compression. Let's pull the spark plug. Let's see if we can actually get some spark out of it. And once I get it out, we're gonna grab the camera, pull it over and see if we have spark coming off of it. Hi, so we've got our 55 cranking amps on, spark plug to an obvious ground. Let's see what happens. Oh, we definitely got spark. Hi, so 
Let's figure out what the heck's going on from here. All right, let's try it again. 55 cranking amp and the pedal is down. Gonna give it full choke. Hi, right, we almost had fire. My bet would be that the carb is probably for some reason flooding out. All right, so what I've done at this point is I've deliberately cleaned up, dried off the entire spark plug. I have clamped off the gas going to the carburetor. So right now, if it fires, it's on any residue that's in the carburetor. And I've got starting fluid here in order to see if it'll stay firing. What that does is it tells us it is the carburetor that's having issues, most likely a drop float or a needle valve stuck in the open position. Okay, nothing at all with it closed off. Starter fluid. So basically at this point we know it's a carburetor issue. So in a way I'm really kind of glad that this did this, but at the same time I really want to warn you about this. Underneath here you'll see the solenoid valve. This is an EPA thing, and this thing is insanely hot. Right now I almost cannot touch this. That's because it's acting up and it's probably part of what's causing the issue inside of this bowl. Now what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the wire to this. We're going to drop this entire solenoid valve out. We're going to drop this entire bowl and clean it and check the needle valve and then go from there. So I was trying to figure out why it was the electrical didn't seem to be working right. And sometimes you should just check the basics. In this case, I don't know if you can see that, but the battery wires are entirely loose. So we're going to pull these off, clean them up, check the battery for its actual voltage, and go from there. All right, so just a side note, on these vented boxes, the tabs coming out of the battery are supposed to be on the upper part of this. And the other thing is, is Craftsman uses a battery where you got the plus on this side and a minus on that side. And the battery that was in here was inverted. So now we're all tightened up. Let's see if it'll actually turn the motor over. All right, so we've got our gas line clamped back off. Hopefully that'll hold. If not, we'll just undo this and lift it up. And we're gonna undo this solenoid, and I'm betting all manner of icky, disgusting things probably ends up spewing out of this. So we're gonna undo the plug and undo the solenoid. See what kind of gunk comes out. And apparently I grabbed a container with a hole in it. So there we are. Actually wasn't too gunky. And here's our solenoid. And basically this pin pops up and it shuts off all of the gas to it. So what we're going to do is dry this out really good with carburetor cleaner. We're going to slice that right off there and then reinstall it. You want to make sure that if there's a washer in the bottom of this, yeah, there's a rubber washer in the bottom of that, you want to be careful not to gung that up because that's how it seals it shut. And whatever you do, don't break into this because then it won't be um, sealed and the gasoline will leak out. All right, well, since we're here, let's tap this bowl. And you just want to tap it slightly, and I kind of twist it, and it'll pop off. And we just want to look in the bottom of it and see what's there. There's the gunk. So we're going to clear that out, spray a little carb cleaner up in there. 
Alright, so luckily the gasket on that came out looking pretty good. And one thing you want to note is that some of these carbs, the bottom is directional. This one, it's just a standard circular carb, so it should be fine in any direction. And you can see the solenoid, we've sliced that off. So now we won't have that to deal with. So we're just going to lift this up and over nice and easy and set it in place. And hopefully get this solenoid valve put back in the bottom without marring up the ceiling washer that's on the bottom of it. Now a lot of other YouTubers will have torque specs and all kinds of other things to tell you and what I'm going to tell you is that I rotate it and I watch the inside and I keep moving it until the outside of the solenoid starts to move but the inside does not. Right there. And so now that's all tightened up and you do not need this plug at all anymore. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to disconnect the kill wire on the battery and see if it'll fire. So on this series of Briggs, if you disconnect this harness here, essentially the whole entire engine becomes independent from the rest of the chassis. There we go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put a booster pack right across that and see what it'll do. So you put the positive on this side. You want to ground directly to an engine ground. I prefer using a mounting bolt there. So we're going to ground it out here. A lot of people will use the exhaust. I don't like that because it gets corroded in the mount for the exhaust. And let's see if it'll turn over at all. My booster got too warm. Alright, we're going to give it a bit of starter fluid. So as you see there, when I plugged in this harness, all of a sudden the motor died. And the thing is, the ignition switch right now is set to the run position. So that tells me that somewhere from this harness back in, either the ignition switch is bad or it's grounding out somewhere. So is it perfect? No, but free is free. The electrical problem isn't a big deal. If you check down in the description, I'll put a link for how I made a push button toggle switch setup for one of these previously. And that's what I'm gonna do with this one. What I'm debating at this point is another mud mower bill, kind of. I like the name Mud Wizard. What do you guys think? Comment down below. Mud Wizard a good name? Have fun guys!